Have you ever pondered over who profits from the devastating aftermath of war? Quite a thought to chew on, isn't it? In the complex world of economics, war has its own unique dynamics. It's a time where the exchange of goods and services intensifies, fueled by the necessities of conflict and survival. Now you might be wondering, how can anyone profit from such dire circumstances? Well, it's not as straightforward as it appears. Certain entities, corporations, individuals, even nations find themselves in positions to capitalize on these situations. How so you ask? By selling what is most needed during conflict. Weapons, vehicles, ships, even the very tools of destruction such as bombs and ammunition. These transactions are not just about meeting the demands of war, they're about generating profit, often astronomical sums, for those who control the supply. Now let's delve deeper into the specifics, to comprehend the magnitude of this situation. When we speak of war, arms and ammunition inevitably become the focal point. The arms industry, a behemoth of economic magnitude, directly profits from the fires of conflict. Take for example, Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman, two of the largest defense contractors in the world. Back during the Iraq War, these corporations saw a significant increase in their stock value, a direct consequence of the escalating demand for weapons and defense systems. Let's not forget the smaller players too. Companies like General Dynamics and Raytheon, while not as large as Lockheed or Northrop, also reaped substantial profits during periods of conflict. Their stock values surged as the demand for their products, from tactical aircraft to missile systems, soared. As we see, the arms industry plays a vital role in war economics, but they are not the sole beneficiaries. The ripple effect of war profiteering extends far beyond the battlefield, reaching into industries you might not expect. Beyond the bullets and bombs there are other industries that also profit from war. Let's take a look at the automobile and ship industries for example. During World War II, General Motors shifted its production from cars to military vehicles, making a substantial profit in the process. They facilitated the movement of troops and supplies, proving that cars and trucks can be as vital to a war effort as any weapon. Similarly, the shipbuilding industry plays a pivotal role in warfare. Hyundai Heavy Industries, a South Korean company, is a prime example. They have been known to produce naval vessels from destroyers to submarines. These seafaring assets are vital in securing strategic advantages over opponents, controlling sea routes and providing support to ground forces. These industries, though not directly linked to the battlefield, are indeed crucial cogs in the war machine. Their contributions, while less visible, underscore the vast economic network that underpins any war effort. Now, having understood the economics of war, one might wonder why a third world war seems inevitable. The answer lies in the economic stimulation that war provides, it's a grim reality, but war creates jobs, boosts industrial production, and generates massive profits. Consider the arms industry. Major corporations like Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman rake in billions from the arms race. Then there's the automobile and ship industry. Companies such as General Motors and Hyundai Heavy Industries see their revenues soar during conflicts as demand for military vehicles and naval vessels spikes. But it's not just about the money. The political landscape is also a factor. Tensions between nations, ideological conflicts and the struggle for resources and power all contribute to the brewing storm. So, is war inevitable? Sadly, as long as it remains profitable and serves political interests, it seems so. The cycle of war and profit continues raising questions about the morality of such profits. As we have seen, war is not just a clash of ideologies or territorial disputes, it is a lucrative business that benefits some at the cost of many. The economics of war revolve around vast industries from arms manufacturing to vehicles and ships, all profiting immensely from conflict. Companies like Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman, along with countless others, make billions from the sale of weapons and military equipment. The automobile industry with giants like General Motors and the shipbuilding sector, led by companies such as Hyundai Heavy Industries, also reap substantial profits during times of war. The unsettling reality that a third world war seems inevitable is rooted in this cycle of profit and destruction. The individuals and corporations profiting from war have a vested interest in its continuation, perpetuating a vicious cycle that is hard to break. The question then remains, can we break this cycle of profit and destruction? That, dear viewers, is a thought for another day.